Good afternoon. Um, so uh, thank you for joining me after your uh, lunch. Um, as I said, my name is Amir Shaked. I work at Perimeter X, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, bots and cards. So uh, let's start. Um, a very brief overview. What are bots? Well, bots are basically any kind of automated scripts or automated engine that runs against some kind of service. Um, it's responsible for at least 50% of the traffic against websites uh, that, we, uh, that we see. Um, some say even more, but at least 50% is non-human uh, traffic on most websites. And uh, not all bots, bots are bad. Some bots are good. You have uh, things like uh, Google and uh, Rigorbot doing a lot of uh, value services for uh, websites. So uh, we're going to talk about those that are not good. Um, I hope you're familiar with this. It's an excellent uh, piece from uh, our chapter about uh, automated threats against uh, websites. And uh, they highlighted the uh, parts uh, that you can see are the ones that are relevant to what we're going to discuss today in terms of um, well, threats against uh, uh, the cart. And another uh, brief uh, <laughs> overview. Um, we separate bots into four categories. And the differentiation between them is important uh, because you're going to view and handle and tackle those in a different way. Uh, the first one is uh, the primitive bots, the generation one and generation two. These are basically scripts based on uh, curl, Python, any kind of other tool uh, that's not running uh, JavaScript. Uh, some of them don't even manage a cookie session. Some of them do. Uh, most of them today know how to do it. Uh, if you're using things like Mechanize and others. And um, they're very popular, they're very common, but we do see a very big shift from these kinds of bots to the more advanced bots, the Generation 3 bots, um, mostly due to popularity of the automation engines for quality assurance on websites. We're all bidding our websites to be testable, and we're trying to run tests as best we can with uh, tools like, uh, in the past, Phantom and Selenium. Today, all the major browsers are built in with those automation uh, capabilities. And um, so you have the generation three. We see more and more of this, uh, this kind of traffic. And the generation four, four bots that we're going to cover uh, briefly are actually many the browser attacks where uh, a legitimate user is being hijacked or part of his session is being hijacked and uh, runs some kind of abuse, not against the user, but against the service that uh, the user is, uh, is using. So, um, this is what we're going to talk about today, the bot and cart relationship. Any of you run an e-commerce or a, a marketplace, work at some place? I know you do. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, four questions that you need to ask yourself looking at your traffic and the behavior of your users. These are the four questions. The first one is, who added an item to the cart on my website? The second is, um, are they really going to buy the item? And the third one is, who is getting the item at the end? Even if a purchase was made, who is going to get the item? And the last one is, who are you going to share your commission with? Because most of the time, when you have a marketplace, when you have a, a store, you're sharing commissions with someone, with an ad network, with an affiliate. Is it the one that you actually wanted to share the commission with? Um, I see it's a bit cut off and the uh, far left, so scraping. Um, so this is the overview, and now uh, I want to dive into the specific uh, examples. Um, so scraping is the first threat that uh, uh, hurts any kind of website, any kind of service. What's interesting when we talk about scraping against uh, the cart is that we see a, a, great, a great advancement and a lot of um, effort being made by scrapers to um, get the most accurate information from the cart itself. Uh, they're not just uh, focusing on getting the product page, getting some information, the official list price. They uh, will go further. Um, it's a very uh, growing business with uh, low margin industries selling all kinds of uh, physical goods. Uh, it's very highly distributed. I'm going to show some example. Uh, they're using a lot of anonymized networks. I'm sure some of you heard about uh, 
Hola, for example, and how their uh, um, extension on the browser is being used as an anonymizing network for a lot of other uh, users, meaning that things like IP reputation are not very good at detecting them because it's legitimate users being abused. And uh, occasionally they can create an application layer DDoS because they're not focusing only on getting the cached content. They're going all the way to your database to get uh, the most accurate information. This usually involves a lot of uh, backend requests and sometimes it can cause a DDoS on the infrastructure. Um, these are just a few examples, but there are plenty of services out there, companies, that their entire business model is based on, you will give us the target, and we will do the project and scrape it, and uh, we'll continue scraping it until we succeed, no matter what kind of protection you would put against it. Uh, and so you would get uh, the information you want, as, uh, as uh, the one who ordered uh, the, um, the intelligence uh, gathering. A uh, few examples, plenty of others. Um, so, scraping done right. Um, a recent example, just from, uh, from uh, two days ago, um, we have here an example of uh, an attack um, hitting uh, a product pages on an e-commerce website. And what you see here are, the, the graph here shows the number of uh, requests made per a number of IPs, meaning um, 140,000 IPs were used only once, and which is around 90% of the scraping attack, and uh, another 8% were IPs were used to get two pages, and the rest is less than 2% requested more than two pages. Meaning any kind of uh, defense mechanism that you want to put, and any kind of uh, monitoring that you want to do on your, uh, on your service, has to rely on trying to detect these uh, attackers as early as possible. They will bypass any kind of uh, um, standard uh, volumetric uh, detection that is uh, looking at any kind of IP level. And this is something very important to remember, um, because IPs are cheap today, very cheap for anybody who's running, trying to run an offensive. Um, the second part, so they visited the product page and now they're doing the follow-up. They're adding the item to the cart, um, they will put the shipping address, they will put the, uh, try to put different details that they can about uh, a user's fake user information, because sometimes uh, you have offerings based on all kinds of parameters from location to gender to other things. And they want to get the most accurate information because remember these are uh, intelligence uh, companies giving this as information for uh, a competitor or your competitor. So they're trying to give them the accurate information. The final um, uh, pricing is never on the official, uh, on the front uh, page. Uh, so what we see them doing is uh, around 20% of the traffic against the cart is completely from automated, 20% uh, adding items to the cart is completely from automated scrapers. I'm not talking about other kinds of attacks yet. And this is very important to know and understand because even if you're doing just BI analytics and trying to understand why are your products not being sold, uh, if there is a 20% um, bias in your data that's not even trying to really buy the product, just doing it to get accurate information, something you should be aware of. Um, even from the business uh, perspective. And of course they won't buy. They will do all of this and they won't buy and they do it continually for all the products, every day, uh, every season. So this is the first part. You have the attackers doing against uh, attack against your car to get the most accurate information in terms of pricing, uh, to do a pricing uh, bidding war. Anybody know what this is? Uh, no. The future shoes. How much do they cost? 25k, right? Yeah, 25k. So this is a very expensive item, and this brings us to the next kind of attack against the shopping cart. Uh, the next kind of attack is scalping. Scalping, like we all know in the physical uh, uh, physical uh, world, same kind of uh, attack only happening by bots in the online business. Um, you see scalping in all kinds of businesses, where there is uh, high demand items or special hype sales, um, items that are released like tickets that are very limited in quantity, uh, all of them experience uh, scalping attacks. And do um, you know the story behind this uh, little box? Mini SNS. 
Yeah, so this one was sold uh, at Walmart for around $70. And uh, they had two such hype sales that sold all the items at $70. And the item was sold within minutes. Okay, Walmart didn't lose any money. Walmart sold all the items. But um, when you checked who's buying the item, you, did, you saw it's not people who are actually going to use it. Minutes afterwards, on eBay, uh, this device was offered from $200 to the highest price uh, eBay saw, uh, sold was $1,500. Now it was sold for only $80 on Walmart. Meaning they were buying these with bots and they were reselling them uh, later on. on, uh, Wait, on so you're saying the bots were buying this? Uh, yeah, bots were buying this and reselling it on platforms like eBay and others um, at a higher price. And real people who wanted these, uh, these devices didn't get them and had to pay a higher device. Well, never got it. Never got the chance to get it. You never got the chance to get it because of the bots. Well, you can pay a higher price. 1500 is the latest. Um, and it's true for a lot of things. Not only these ones. It's, uh, it's very known in the ticketing uh, world, but it's also for a lot of other products. Um, so here's an example uh, of uh, scalping done right. Um, you have uh, bots are coming. Uh, you can see here, uh, the sale is about to start, all the red ones, and if you don't see the blue, that's okay. Uh, all the red ones are bots checking if the sale started. The sale starts, you can see a bit of blue. Can you see the blue? Okay. No? So a bit here and a bit there, but most of it is uh, bots. After lunch, you're going to be very, very sleepy. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to have to trust me. So this is a bit of here and a bit there, uh, blue, let's say 15%. So the sale starts and you have uh, a lot of bots buying and some humans manage to buy, so they're, they're the lucky ones. And the sale continues and there is no one humans left. No, no human manages to get in on the chance to actually complete the purchase and buy the item on sale. Um, that was a very successful uh, scalping attack against that specific product. Um, For a second, why do you call it a scalping attack? It's not an attack. Somebody wants to make money. It's not a hacking or something. I'll get to that a bit later, and then we can have this. Uh, I'll, I'll answer you if you haven't, uh, if you if you're not uh, convinced. So. Um, well, the first thing actually about scalping is the company doesn't lose money because all the items were sold. Uh, it's, a lot hurt, it's a lot more hurting in reputation. These guys are not very nice in what they do. They load YouTube, the videos showing here are all the boxes that we bought and um, um, pointing out the company, failing to protect them, etc. Um, and then you have a lot of complaints against the company from users who, uh, who wanted to buy the product. But yes, you can say that nobody lost money in the process. Um, but that's a big issue. And the fact that it's a big issue, uh, you can see here, they're trying to do legislation against it because it's completely legal to do it. Uh, but they are trying to do all kinds of legislation against it. Uh, if you can see here, the uh, Better Online Ticket uh, Sales Act uh, or the Bots Act. And uh, I guess we know who's the geek who offered this bill to Congress. But uh, they're trying to offer bills to make it illegal um, just as scalping of tickets in, uh, in the road, that's illegal. Um, so you can say it's an attack. Okay, any questions so far? Good. Okay, so this should answer what we, we just heard. Uh, why is this an attack? Why is this uh, a problem? And the answer is hoarding. Um, we have... Um, a very common. Yeah. Um, sure. It's sort of like a selenium kind of attack where it's just um, somebody, you know, sets up a uh, routine and then just repeats it. Yeah. Uh, so you, you see, it depends on the site, uh, but you see like the basic ones that never added any kind of protection. You can bypass them, bypass them even with simple Python scripts. Uh, but then you have those that use Selenium, Phantom, uh, and other kind of uh, automation engines. Um, but they don't stop there. Because it's a business, because they do a lot of money, we'll find 
a lot of companies that do scoping as a service and uh, you will find a lot of repositories on GitHub with the uh, source code on how to do scoping. Uh, you can check it out, Nike bot and stuff like that. You will find a lot of examples out there of tools to use uh, to do scoping. Uh, they're not hiding it. Because it's not illegal, they're not hiding what they're doing. Um, well, the question was asked, and I think this is the first thing here. Is it, it just fair game? I'm buying cheap, I'm selling uh, high, that's just the way uh, um, our economy works. Well, it is if you're playing fair, but they're not playing fair. One of, one of the things they're doing is um, preventing the item to be available to anybody else. They're uh, holding it only to themselves. And this is the hoarding attack uh, that we do see quite a lot. Um, the hoarding attack, uh, basically, you hoard all the items to yourself. How do you do that? Uh, you run an attack on the cart, you add items to the cart. Now the way physical goods carts work usually is when a user adds an item to the cart, you put it on hold, you uh, put it out of the inventory for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes to give the user a chance to actually complete the purchase. You don't want him to have the experience of adding an item and then telling him not available. So they're adding the item uh, to the cart. Um, doing it enough times for enough, uh, enough uh, IPs uh, and stuff like that. And they're denying the availability of the item being purchased by other users. We can see an example here. Um, you can see at the bot, this was a very limited item. They, had, uh, they sold only two pieces, so uh, the attack uh, uh, was uh, successful very quickly. Uh, you see the bot visiting the page constantly, the product page. Uh, on the second graph, you see the add to cart attempts, and you see they're going down, and in a minute we'll see why, but it's constantly adding the item to a cart, every time. A new cart, adding the item, a new cart, adding the item, effectively taking all the items off the inventory in the website's uh, backend. And this is the item availability, and as you see, it goes down, and there are times when the item is not available. Now, the experience a user uh, has when he goes on that uh, specific e-commerce website, he goes to the product, the product is not available says sold out, but if you check the database and ask the company and say, we haven't sold a single piece, uh, we, the item is never available, but we're not selling it. Then if you will check on eBay, it's there. The item is available for sale. How are you doing it? They're combining these things. He's putting the item to sale on uh, eBay. He's using them as uh, a free uh, storage. Uh, effectively preventing anybody else from uh, buying the item. Once he manages to get a sale on eBay, he just releases one item, purchases it, ships it directly to the one he wanted, and has uh, makes the money. So this is to answer what you asked, even it's just fair game. So I don't think it's fair game. It's not a but fair game, but it's legal. Hmm? Yeah, it's legal. So far it's legal. By the way, regarding But I'm not asked, I'm not talking about laws by, by the way. I'm talking about what we and you and everybody here should call, look at and focus on as security. You call it an attack. Yeah. You call it an attack. I do call it an attack. Why? Because it hurts the company, it hurts their reputation. They're willing to put money to uh, to protect themselves. So for them, it's an attack. If you throw a bag of uh, uh, dirt on their windows, it's an attack. It's pretty much the same for them in, in terms of experience. They're not losing money. They're losing reputation and uh, customer uh, um, uh, experience. Supported. No, they don't lose money. They sold all the items. Ah, with this one, yes. This one, they actually lose money. With hoarding, they actually lose money. But if they're only doing scalping, they don't lose money. <clears throat> but okay. eventually, they will lose money. Um, they are not losing money this moment. Next moment, they lose money. In terms of the reputation damage, and uh, could be. I'm not so sure, because usually it's uh, products that are so in high demand that the people will always try to buy them. So I don't know. But what you say is completely possible uh, that it will happen. Um, so far, I haven't seen ex actual examples where they lose money because of scalping. Um, with hoarding, they have lost a lot of money. OK, so uh, the last attack. Um, the clock's not working here. So where are we on times? Excellent. OK, so the last attack. Um, is uh, we talked about uh, uh, scraping and uh, we talked about hoarding. Usually those attacks happen with fairly primitive bots, Python scripts, and uh, saving cookies, managing sessions. 
Um, scalping almost always done with some kind of an automation engine, uh, more advanced because the site has more complex uh, security measures because they know they're being hurt. And uh, let's go to uh, the final attack against the cart, which is the affiliate fraud. Um, now you all will know how affiliate works. Uh, as an e-commerce website, I have affiliates. The affiliates bring traffic to my site. Uh, when a user completes a purchase or some kind of a conversion on my site, I pay a commission <coughs> to the affiliate. Uh, could be a percentage of the purchase, could be something else, but that's how it basically works. And here we have a lot of attacks uh, from uh, malicious extensions and other kind of malwares um, tackling that exact um, uh, issue. Um, if we go here, um, how the store works? I download the Chrome extension from the store, any kind of store uh, uh, Chrome extension. Uh, I unpack it, I open one of the files, I add some lines of code uh, and script into the, the manifest. I repack it, maybe change the name a bit. I'm not uh, uBlock, I'm uBlock the best one plus. And uh, I reload to the store. And I hope somebody will download it. And wait, if somebody downloads it, he installs it on his uh, browser, he gets the full experience of the, f of the real Chrome extension, plus a few lines of code that I added uh, that do some uh, nasty stuff. Uh, what do they do? Now, here's an example. Can you see the code? No. no. That's a shame. Yeah. The switches for the light. Switches on the right. Our right. You're right. That's a different right. I just pressed everyone. Better? No? It's good? I'm going to push on. Okay, so um, anybody knows what's written here? Can you decode it? Um, well, I'll say it out loud while I'm trying to light. It says double base 64, and you have. Um, that's it, that's all the options. Okay, so uh, this is the script inserted inside the, the extension. Uh, what you have here, uh, you can see the slide later on, uh, it will be available. Uh, so you have a create element, double base 64, and a string. Now, double base 64 is not a real function, but uh, if you uh, reverse a bit the JavaScript, you find that it really is a kind of a base 64 and base 64. And uh, this line of code, uh, it basically says iframe. Now, this little hack bypasses most of the antiviruses and the Chrome Store uh, checkups uh, because it doesn't know what kind of element it adds and it doesn't know that it's a malicious extension because it adds an iframe. What it does is adds an iframe, the Chrome extension, adds an iframe to the active page the user is viewing and it's injecting with this piece of code. Uh, this is the interesting part. It's a bit longer, but this is the inter interesting part. Uh, also, doing a call to a CNC server getting a URL, doing a base64 decode to uh, get the actual uh, line that's uh, interesting, and uh, makes a call, uh, adds, basically adds a cookie to the site. Now, why is this uh, interesting? Because the way affiliates work is by setting a cookie with the affiliate ID when you're in the, in the store that you're uh, currently using, meaning that I can override it. The Chrome extension actually overrides the cookie while you're using the, the store and sets a different value according to what they wanted. They will do it repeatedly every few seconds. So um, I download the, the extension. I'm going to any kind of website, uh, ebay.com. Uh, they set the affiliate ID to be my uh, affiliate ID. And if somebody completes a purchase, I make money uh, without doing anything, uh, without actually putting any website and driving any real traffic. Uh, this specific extension has 51,000 target domains that, he, that uh, it changes the affiliate ID on. It has a lot of installs. It's uh, several different extensions with a user base from, uh, from the store of several million users. So you can, uh, you can understand the, level, the amount of money they might be able to achieve. Obviously, not all those users are completing a purchase, but it's a very cheap attack in terms of the attacker, and they can do it. Here's another example. 
Um, this one uh, was a bit uh, different in the techniques of hiding and uh, uh, manipulating. Uh, they added, they re-edited the jQuery GS file uh, and added a few bits of code into the jQuery file. Um, they changed, uh, say, uh, they defined a new function with the same name, uh, added a few strings, these are just very long strings. Um, this is basically base64 decode, just uh, with a lot more words. And this, uh, which might sound, might at the first glance look uh, uh, different, basically says run evil, JavaScript evil, which is take this line of code and run everything in it. Uh, from these few strings that are actually uh, uh, code and not strings. And um, this was interesting because it wasn't so obvious to find. The Chrome extension has jQuery.js. Everyone has jQuery.js jQuery in their uh, extensions. Uh, they embedded the lines inside the file, which is a very big file. They use a non-standard version, so it was uh, a bit harder to detect the specific uh, lines that were inserted. Um, and I don't like uh, going over lines manually, so with the script, download all the version of jQuery, diffed all of them to find the specific additions that they made. And they're doing the same thing, again. They're creating an iframe, injecting it into the host uh, website, and uh, changing the IDs. This one with a few more uh, do target domains, 60,000 this time. 70,000 of them are in the Alexa top medium. They're targeting all the main websites. Um, questions so far? One second, I can see you, but not anyone else. Wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So the attacker actually shared the, the credit card number with the bot, right? Um, not the credit card number, but the affiliate ID. What do you mean? The way affiliates work is you have you 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 create affiliate program. Every kind of affiliate gets an ID, and uh, in your website, you, uh, when an affiliate drives traffic to your website. What you do is you take that parameter from somewhere, the query string or somewhere else, and you set a cookie on the user. So if the user leaves the site and comes back, you will still consider him bring, coming from the affiliate and use it as the, uh, the affiliate that you will share the commission with. I'm going to eBay, I'm completing a purchase, I went through your blog, uh, through the blog I got to eBay, I left eBay, I came back, I still have the cookie for a certain time saying that I came from, uh, from your blog. When I complete a purchase, you get 1%, 2% commission from my, from my purchase. So they're stealing that commission. They're actually stealing money from the real affiliates and from the company itself because not all traffic is organic from affiliates. They're generating more traffic from affiliates. So that's what they're doing. More questions? Yeah. How does the extension find its way to the browser? People download it. They just download it. What for? What does it do? It's you block. You block plus, you block plus plus, you block the best. Yeah. And that doesn't Google screen the extensions? Not really. Fact is, uh, we have a dozen of these. And they're doing all kinds of tricks, so it's hard to, to detect them. And they will change the manifest to, to make it uh, different. Um, nobody says you can't have uh, uh, you can do any, any number of names you want. They don't care. Um, it's embedded inside the Chrome extension. I don't think this case is a, an attack on the developer itself. They jump, it's an attack against the store. They're just injecting it. They're hiding it inside the file. It's harder to find that, uh, the, the, the changes within. Hmm? It's well known, but there are a lot of versions, and not all of them are official. Um, that's how they did it. Previous one did it a different way. Uh, we have other examples, everybody doing it, uh, hiding it in different ways. Okay. Were we on time? Okay, yeah. If, if they take the money, if it is to take the money out of the e-commerce site, is it 
Well, the, the, the e-commerce website itself can do all kinds of uh, checks against affiliates and see if traffic is organic, uh, real or not real, where they're coming. I'm going to touch it a bit um, to see if somebody is manipulating their affiliates, but they're uh, working with CNC servers. They're constantly generating new affiliate codes. It's not the same code embedded uh, forever inside the script. They're changing the affiliate codes all the time. All of them have CNC servers they're communicating with. Um, Okay. The, the affiliate code, isn't yeah. it something that, is, that should be issued by the, uh, by the owner of the service? Yes, it is. And followed and it is. You just inject it. I just inject it. You have a, a, a huge website that has thousands of thousands of affiliates. He doesn't really know any one of them personally. Think of Amazon. Okay. You so just you sign do up. Not, you do not register officially your, your affiliates. You just create a free program to use any affiliate that wants yes, to Yes, but it's a, it's a very common practice. Most big uh, platforms and e-commerce has this kind of uh, programs. Or networks that offer them to them as a program, so they can just attack the network and get, get, gain it against the entire network of uh, affiliates. Um, okay, so we talked about a lot of threats. Uh, let's talk briefly about how you can fight back, because I do want you to take something out of it which is not just, uh, it's a problem. Um, so, first thing, let's just put a captcha. Uh, if it's not a human, it's a bot, we put a captcha, we know it's not a bot. Well, I don't recommend it for two reasons, they're written here, so you already read them. First one, you will lose sales. And uh, in terms of uh, what we talked uh, talk about so far and losing sales, you should do your own uh, analysis of what costs more, but I think 30% down increase in, uh, in uh, conversion is a great, uh, a great impact. Um, and the second thing is, captures are solved automatically. Any one of them. Google recapture, same thing. Maybe a lower success rate, but it's very cheap to do it. And um, automatically, not even by human farms or anything. Um, and this is important because Let's go back even, not for the uh, scalping where you say, let's make sure it's a human, even the, in the scraping attacks uh, we talked about in the first place, uh, you will not put a captcha on every page every time a user goes in to see a product page. Uh, nobody will browse your website besides the attackers. So I don't recommend using a captcha. Um, yeah. Same thing. The invisible capture can be bypassed by bot. That's that's what I mean. It yeah. will be bypassed. Yeah, the, the first one was that the user may not go to your store capture. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the fact is uh, that the attacker can bypass the invisible capture, and if you actually want to try and uh, uh, present a real challenge, you will present the capture challenge, which is not invisible, and that will hurt users. No, no, it's, it's true, the invisible captcha is relevant, but um, it's something, but it's not enough. Otherwise, might, I might not have a business, but I do. Um, so, uh, it's not really solving the problem. Um, ten, minutes. 10 minutes, excellent. Uh, okay, so, first thing, really basic. Log everything you do in a single place from your web servers, from your application logs, from your uh, e-commerce platform if you're using something specific or sales or, or whatever. Because you do want to have one place where you can do the analysis of all the things we talked about. From somebody not uh, completing their purchase, to the affiliates, to adding items to the cart. You have to take it into uh, account because some of these attacks will hurt your business decisions and might not do any kind of real damage to your infrastructure. Those price scraping attacks or add to cart attacks, they won't hurt you financially, uh, but you might make the wrong decisions on how to design your website and how to put different items, all your A-B testing. Think of it A-B testing with a 20% bias. Uh, it's, not very, it's not very effective. Um, obviously, track the specific path uh, for the cart for any kind of spikes and anomalies. Um, that will help you help you greatly in noticing there is actually an attack going against you. Uh, and uh, the best option I, I can offer you is use a few lines of code, add a fake item to the page, uh, another, one, I, another one of your items, add an item to the, to the uh, page, and with JavaScript, hide that item. Now, what that will allow you is 
uh, it won't tell you who's the attacker because the attacker is going to come from very distributed uh, uh, network. But it will tell you that you are under attack. It will help you understand that it's something you do need to, to deal and, uh, and start uh, yeah, working with. Um, use JavaScript to hide the, the item and don't do it by CSS because the scrapers will know how to deal with it very, very uh, uh, quickly. Um, so that would be uh, the alert that you can add to your site and know that you're under attack. Uh, any questions? Okay. Um, and we talked about two levels of attackers, the primitive bots and the automation engines. So I'm going to cover briefly a few uh, options for the primitive bots and then for the uh, and more advanced engines, uh, things you should uh, consider. Uh, first thing, look at your HTTP traffic again on all your uh, flow to track all kinds of uh, anomalies. You would have missing headers, you would have uh, invalid values, you would have uh, values of uh, a language says Russia and is coming from Israel, uh, but with a very uh, uh, high number, you would see all kinds of uh, strange things. It will help you identify them. Uh, track a legitimate flow. If you have a cart page and there is a lot of XHR calls in that page, and when you look at your logs, you don't see them. You see only the action to add the item to the cart. You can understand that there is something uh, going on with that uh, attack. Maybe from that, we'll be able to identify a specific signature or something like that. But this is a behavioral analysis that will help tell you that uh, somebody is messing with your pages on your cart. Um, I do recommend looking at suspicious user agents, not only in Google, um, especially when we're talking about um, Scalpers and other tools, you will find them everywhere. Uh, and don't rely on IP reputation. It really won't help you that much. It might actually just cause you false positives. And the last thing, uh, again, a few lines of code that you probably can't see. Um, so uh, validate the user is actually running JavaScript. This is very important. Why? Because if your user is not running JavaScript, there is a very uh, small chance he is actually human. Um, most of you don't disable complete uh, JavaScript behavior, and if you do, you probably can browse a lot of uh, websites. Uh, so it's something to assume. And with that, you can use all kinds of things. You have a nice library on GitHub you can use for device fingerprinting and try and use that to identify if somebody is uh, manipulating you. Maybe the same fingerprint is doing all the purchases as a scalper. A uh, few tricks or ideas that you can do, and from then uh, move on, for example. Um, Chrome, headless Chrome, uh, hard coded in the in the code. This says headless Chrome is user agent. You can use that, obviously, uh, and you can do a lot more. Uh, if the plugin's length is zero, meaning there is no plugins installed in the browser, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bot, but it's more likely that it's a bot. Uh, so it's again something you can use to uh, with your analysis. Uh, spoof devices. Um, if there is an orientation change, like in the device, and the user agent is Windows, who here is using Windows Phone? Excellent. So it's not Windows. Um, so that's an example. Um, and you have specific things like uh, Phantom will usually put values on the window uh, uh, object, and you can use them to understand like, things like Phantom. Um, a lot of materials out there. Once you start reading, you'll find a lot of uh, public resources you can use. Um, that's it. If there are any more questions, it was interesting. We're hiring. Yes. Well, let's say your line can be detected you're under attack. What would you do? You can't not sell. Uh, sell to the right people. If it's a hype sale, for example, enough people that want to buy the item, make sure you sell to those uh, who you want to sell to. Uh, if it's a hoarding attack, stop the hoarder. Make sure the item is available for sale and not being stopped at the inventory forever. Uh, again, when it comes to price scraping, uh, if you manage to find it's an attacker, uh, you will do a lot of, it will do a lot of impact. First, I talked about BI and uh, analysis, but also in terms of competition. Uh, if your competitors match your pricing by a cent less, probably you're under attack, try to fight it. Yes, but what is the, what is the real solution for this? Because you need to fight this dynamically, and, yeah. and, and, and you need to realize that you have an bot attacking you, and you need to 
to, to decide very fast what you need to do. <coughs> it's the real solution. You, you throw different things that human cannot possibly do in real time. It's just not possible. No, it's not for, uh, uh, for offline analysis. The, 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 the solution is to do it real time, to do behavioral analysis in real time, and to track who is actually doing it. And, and you are block. doing it? That's what, that's what we sell, but this is not a sales pitch, but this is, this is what we do. This is what we fight. Um, but these are items that you can take and, and see if, and if you're under attack, if you have a problem. And sometimes with uh, simple tools, you can stop those attacking you. You don't have to go uh, all out with everything uh, against someone uh, hurting you. Depends on the use case. Um, Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I, I saw on some American websites, they have a, 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 an image which is kind of a captcha. It says, enter the coupon code SUMMER and get 20% off. Is this anti-bot or just some kind of consumer gain? Uh, I think that's a consumer gain. I don't think it uh, is a bot uh, defense. So obviously, uh, you need OCR to decode this if you're not the human. Mm -hmm. If you're you, you say, oh, I'm getting 10% off. And then the scalpers only see the higher price. Yeah, that's a nice idea. If uh, not for the scrapers, you mean? Anti trick. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a nice trick. You can use that. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you.